Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, the show that unleashes the truth of Genesis and reveals the trap of atheism. Okay, today we're going to talk about what all atheists have to believe, or what I believe is a trap of, of atheism that many Christians aren't really aware of. Um, we've probably all known people that uh, claim to be Christians at one point, and that somewhere along the way they've given up their faith, and they now declare themselves to be atheists. Right, yeah. What had to happen in their minds for them to go from uh, supposedly believing Christian to atheist? Uh, well, there's three things that all atheists have to believe. That's right. Yeah, you wrote an article on this, Cal, right? And uh, and listed three things. And there were some comments, some feedback from folks that uh, yes, that uh, really hadn't thought of it that way before, right? But yet, those three points are logically laid out. What are those three points? Yeah, we're not trying to pigeonhole people here, but these are three things all atheists have to believe. Number one, they have to believe that God's word can't be trusted as plainly written. That's of course. That's obvious. Uh, second thing they need to believe in is uh, millions of years of Earth history. The third thing they need to believe in is evolution. Why? If you're an atheist, um, you don't believe there's a God, there's a creator, so you must believe in some form of evolution. That's a, it's a right. given. You yeah. have to believe things create themselves. Um, things can't create themselves uh, quickly. It has to occur over millions of years. You need millions of years to believe in, in evolution. And of course, um, you can't take God's word as plainly written because it's God's word. You don't believe in God. Now, yeah. uh, the, uh, the interesting thing about that is that many Christians believe all three of those things, which is kind of scary. And so, and so you're, you're, the, the point to that article really was that those Christians who hold to those three things, they believe in evolution, they believe, of course, it's millions of years. Right. And, uh, well, Genesis, we, can't, we can't trust God's word in Genesis. They're on the road to atheism. That right. was the point, and that's what got people a little bit, a little bit steamed. But work it through, and... It's a logical reasoning. It is. Because where most people, um, where I see many Christians kind of start down that path is they start to believe in millions of years. I mean, that's just inundated. It, you know, it's, it's just everywhere, it's isn't it? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. So you believe in millions of years. Well, automatically, as soon as you accept that as a Christian, you've already accepted one of the other tenets of atheism because now you look at God's word because nowhere in the Bible is millions of years mentioned. So automatically you say, well, yeah, millions of years of earth history is true. Well, you can't really read the Bible as plainly written. Genesis yeah, doesn't seem to indicate to, that. So you have to twist that around. Right. And now, if you're going to accept secular interpretations of history, uh, as far as geology and, and, and earth history go, why wouldn't you accept secular interpretations of biology, of, of, sure. of evolution? Yeah. And so there are many uh, Christians, and we've mentioned this before, that of course you can be a Christian and an evolutionist. That's not the criteria for, for Christianity. However, you've started down that slope where, where now, if something occurs in your life, maybe some kind of hurt or, or something like that in the church, we've all heard these types of stories, um, you now have an intellectual way to, uh, to explain why, wow, you know, there is no God, or maybe you can turn your back on God or, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, many times, uh, you know, I've met Christians that say, well, Cal, listen, you know, this is a modern age. This is a modern society. We, we've got to accept science here. You know, we, we don't want to be seen as, you know, Christians from the dark ages, and we don't believe in science. And I mean, obviously, Genesis is just mythology. I mean, look at it. You know, yes. you've got a talking yes. snake yeah. in there. I mean, you know, it's poetic, et cetera, et cetera. But and, and we need to, we need to, I guess, define what, 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 what folks mean by science. Most of the time when people say we need to accept science is, we need to accept man's understanding, man's interpretation of right. certain rock layers and radioisotope dating that obviously points to millions of years. That's what they mean by science. Right. And so even many Christians are saying, well, obviously, you know, the talking snake or whatever. It, it's got to be poetic. Science has proven this and that. But let's think about it here. What about the talking don donkey in Deuteronomy? 
I mean, are, are we supposed to study scripture based on what modern science, you know, interpretations are revealing? Yeah. Uh, if, I, I mean, if we do that, what are you left with? A virgin birth? Well, science can prove that that's impossible. Right. A human walking on water? That's that's impossible. How, how about happen. the floating accent uh, uh, experiment? Yeah, right. Let, let's yeah. try that one and see if it works I've out. I've never seen one. I... <laughs> We believe in a supernatural God. Obviously, if you're going to believe in Christ's uh, uh, virgin conception, his birth, his death, his resurrection, the miracles he performed, uh, you cannot go to science to dictate on wh wh what, the, what the scripture is saying there. You just take it as plainly written. Right. And so and this is one a, of the points in your article is, is that that's exactly what some Christians are doing. They're, right. they're saying, well, no, no, we'll accept the miracles elsewhere in scripture, but we won't accept the miracle of creation because that's unscientific. Right. It's, well, it's how inconsistent. inconsistent is that? <laughs> exactly. Um, respected theologian and president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Dr. Albert Moeller. Yes. Um, he's considered by Time.com as the reigning intellectual of the uh, evangelical movement in the U.S. Now, he, he was interviewed in our Creation Magazine um, yeah, a, a, a back. while back, and uh, he made a great point in his article. Um, he said this, um, when we are told that we have to accept and embrace the theory of evolution in order to escape being considered intellectually backward, remember the opposition to Francis Collins. It just doesn't work. When Collins' elevation to the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, post was announced, evolutionary scientist P.Z. Myers lamented, I don't want American science to be represented by a clown. This is the predicament of those who argue that evangelicals must accept some form of theistic evolution. The guardians of evolution still consider them clowns. Thus, you might think that the scientific world would have celebrated the elevation of Dr. Collins to the NIH. Not so. Harvard Steven Pinker declared that Collins is an advocate of profoundly anti-scientific beliefs. Other leading scientists said far worse. Why? As the New Yorker reports this week, Dr. Collins is a believing Christian. So despite all of, all of Collins, uh, uh, his high level uh, of standing in science, I mean, I don't think anyone would dispute that Dr. Collins is a, is a leading scientist of our age. I mean, of involved course. in the Human Genome Project there years ago. Uh, and yet, because he claims to be a Christian, right. even though he doesn't believe in creation, he's a theistic evolutionist, He's labeled a clown by That's the right. evolutionists. Isn't that interesting? I've heard all sorts of terminology, and I'm sure many <laughs> people have. I mean, you know, to argue that, well, if we don't accept science in this area in millions of years and all that stuff, we're, we're, people are going to think you're a moron. I mean, people throw words like that around, right? But folks, if you believe that a virgin human female gave birth, they think, they think the same we're thing. And they anyway. They use the it's, same terminology. It's, it's, and the Bible talks about persecution and so on, that if, if right. we follow Christ, we can expect that kind of reaction from many right. people. It's the best to be consistent. So biblical creation, uh, founded in the understanding of presuppositional apologetics, that we, we presuppose things uh, before we look at the evidence, sure. et cetera. We've talked about this before. Just like the evolutionist does. Yes. <laughs> it's one of the best immunizers against uh, apostasy. Because for someone like myself or yourself to go from believe, Bible-believing Christian to atheist, We'd have to take all these steps. You'd have to start accepting all these three things. But many Christians, they're already there. They're ripe for the plucking in the sense that they already believe the fundamental tenets of atheism. Right. Yeah. So you can check out that article on our website, creation.com, what all atheists have to believe. <laughs>